It's a contradiction wrapped up in a cliche It's the old catch-22 They'll gently nudge you back into the margins It's do as I say, not as I do Whoa You're on the ropes again, it's sound bigger for me, yeah What you do Whoa You're on the ropes again It's time to make a play Yeah Whoa Dig deep and find the strength There's just no other way And I know It seems like no one's in your corner I know You thought of throwing in the towel other bands um in the interim i was wondering if you could give us a rundown of those but also tell us why i decided to come back together and uh, make a new record well uh the band formed originally in 1991 and after i don't know how long it was before we decided on the hiatus but we uh you know we went through the rigors of 90s punk rock where it was a kill rock stars era and we had change thrown at us for signing to a major label. (laughs) We kind of, and then we like rebelled against punk rock and made a more kind of arty record called ignorance is bliss. And, uh, we went on, you know, kind of a crazy journey for a lot of years. And after doing about 7,000 warp tours and various other things that punk rock bands do, I think around the early two thousands, we started getting, just a little bit burnout, and at the time we said we were breaking up, but no band ever really breaks up. So now we call it a hiatus or an extended lunch. It, I was, was going to say I heard lunch break. Yeah, in the yeah it was kind earlier. of a long lunch break. Yeah. That's it cool. was delicious, by the way. <laughs> yeah. I think you know we've played in other bands, but there's not really anything of note. Maybe except mm. for this guy right here had a band called Lefty that was uh, pretty mm. rocking. Um, well, Viva Death. Scott and I have well. had a side project called Viva Death during and kind of 
uh, in between our break it. and whatnot. I and play then, guitar in the gimmies, filling in for my brother Chris for about yes. 14 or so years at this point as well. Yes. God, has it been four? I was going to say that's more of a recent occurrence, but no, 14 no. years is not recent. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> right, like the 10 years for these newbies <laughs> yeah, yeah, being yeah. with... Danny's Game been in some kind of cool, like, you know, metal-y kind of harder bands than this. He he didn't get to play Cajon in those bands. Um, but, yeah, I mean, obvious, face-to-face is like our main thing. It's it's uh, what we love to do and the thing that brings us all together. So so what was the impetus for, for production? We just, oh, for protection. Um, well, protection came a couple records after our, our, our kind of reformation, mm-hmm. but... Um, you know, we love doing face to face more than anything else, and it's the thing that brought us all back together. When we when we weren't playing face to face, it was just something that we missed. It was a void that couldn't be filled by the various side projects and other things. So we put that back together. Um, Protection was uh, it's our first record back on Fat Records, yes. and um, so that homecoming and the whole spirit of that idea of coming back to like the label that started it all for us. Um, also was uh, a record we wanted to make that really, I think, brought us back to our roots as a punk rock band. And it, it, Protection uh, kind of draws heavily off of the early influence of the first three albums. Oh, cool. My phone is ringing. That's not very cool for live very stuff. And I can't turn it off. Some 101. It's in a bag <laughs> and it won't turn off. Anyhow, um, okay. that'll stop in a second. So... Uh, yeah, it's it. Protection is kind of like a full circle for us. It's it's back to the the roots of the punk rock that we started with, and being back at home at Fat Records, which really does feel like a home. The people there are so cool, and it's just They're such so a great. it's an awesome environment for for making music. And frankly, it took us way too long to go back to the label, but it feels great now that we're back there. Good. <clears throat> Well, what's the next song you've got for us today? Uh, the next song, we're going to hearken back to that art record I mentioned called Ignorance is Bliss. All right. Um, we don't really play this these this music in our punk rock set because it's so different, but acoustic is kind of the, the best way of reproducing it live. So Great. We're gonna make an, I'm going to make an attempt at it. Uh, my previous attempt at the last song was kind of crappy. We'll see if I can do better on this one. This one's called Burden. Should I start in the right place? Oh, Dude, oh. I'm nervous right now. I've, I've played on TV before, but somehow the internet's making me nervous today. That's I don't know what Trevor. The, <laughs> what's going on? All right, here we go. So 
something left it I should I Office earlier talking a little bit about playing some of these songs acoustic. Um, could you tell us a little bit about that? Like, are you do you have like acoustic breakdowns during shows? Um, something about like like special like acoustic sets for VIP? Tell us a little bit about. Well, this song here, Burden, like I mentioned, was off of our album Ignorance Is Bliss. It's a record we don't do live in the punk set because it's so different. So. Um, a few years back, Scott and I went out and played acoustic shows only, just the two of us, and we did that whole Ignorance is Bliss record front to back. That oh, was cool. kind of the, the idea of that tour. That was the first time we really tried doing something acoustic, and then um, on this current tour we're on, our Econolive tour, we're doing uh, something different <clears throat> we've never done before. A lot of bands do it. Um, we're doing a, a, like a VIP set mm-hmm. Uh, before our show each day so um, people that want to get an upgraded ticket get to come in you do the meet and greet and all that good stuff and then we play for about a half an hour just like this acoustic and it gives us an opportunity to do about eight or ten other songs that aren't included in the uh, in the full set later in the night so it's you know it's something that's different for us and we're still trying to figure out you know how to play off of each other and kind of sink in and and make it work. We've done about five shows that way so far. And um, so when the paste opportunity came up to do this, it was like, hey, we're already kind of doing that stuff. So So we're like the VIP right now. (laughs) During the punk rock set, the blood and sweat covers up the mistakes. So you get all the glaring (laughs) imperfections. Yeah. Which is what makes it great. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So anyway, um, yeah. So we've been doing this a little bit, despite what it may seem like right now. Um, and Danny loves the opportunity to play the cajon, the mini cajon. He which keeps is... showing up with more and more interesting little toys. <laughs> I only to brought play. about half of the stuff. I'd like to get a That's talking That's only door. half? This is no, going to kickstart be... his percussionist career. Totally. totally. <laughs> Don Henley is going to see this and be like, I want I don't him. I think so. Yes. <laughs> What's the last song you got for us today? Uh, this is uh, one of our classic songs called AOK that is a fun campfire song when you play it acoustic. Do you want right. to preface this is the first time? <laughs> no. Well, this will be the first time we've tried. We were rehearsing this on the couch just a few minutes before this started. So This isn't usually Well, now part everyone of the knows. We're going to, yeah. yeah. So um, there shouldn't be, Fail there'll be fewer sale. mistakes in this song yeah. than the other one because it's we play it every night, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, sure. All right, everyone jump in together, right? <laughs> yeah. One, two, one, two, three, four.
Uh, on the live feed for an acoustic album, so I think you're set. Excellent. Cool. Um, that in the comment that says it's like Mumford and Sons playing a face to face song. So I'll let you interpret that. That's because you of that. Danny's That's beard. Fault. That's totally That's, my fault. Yeah. It's Danny. That well, we actually, yeah. Mm. Just let well, leave that one. Kind of yodeling. We'll leave little that bit, out. So. Yeah. <laughs> so y'all have a sold out gig tonight. Um, <clears throat> sorry, at Knitting Factory. Where else uh, can folks catch face to face live? Uh, we're doing a Boston show, and uh, actually Somerville to be specific, tomorrow night, and then we'll be down in Asbury Park, New Jersey, the following night, and then in D.C. on Mother's Day, and then you'll have to follow us the to best Florida. Best Mother's Day present, obviously. <laughs> we have about um, we're we're doing Florida, and then a couple weeks later we're going to be in Salt Lake, Denver, working our way up to the Midwest. So we've got probably about three or so weeks worth of dates on our Econo Live tour. It's a, it's a celebration. It's kind of like a 20th anniversary of a really small club tour that we did in the late 90s. And we're bringing that back, coming in, playing the small clubs, getting up close and personal. So it's, it's been a lot of fun. It's the best. Awesome. Yeah, there's been some real uh, near disasters at some of these shows so far because there's no barricade. And you got a lot That's of 40-somethings. That's the spirit somethings. of punk rock, right? A lot of 40-somethings trying to relive their youth fueled by alcohol and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's, there's some crazy uh, mistakes waiting to happen. We're trying to prevent those as best we can. Or though. embrace them. It's fine. <laughs> well, thanks so much thanks for being fun. here with us today. Um, break leg. Come back anytime. Thank you Thanks so for much. having us. Get well. Thank you.